Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad today to be bringing God's word to you. Now, we are just a few days to the month, to the end of the month of November, and we are going to be stepping into the last month of the Gregorian calendar, which is December. Now, hear me. God has plans for you. Even this month, praise God. It doesn't take God 24 hours to turn your life around. It doesn't. Now the question is, will you hold on to his word? Before we go into today's broadcast, I want us to call in our daily bread. Are you ready? Join me right now and declare, say, Father, I demand and I receive right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I want to share something with you that would help you not just end this month well, but also prepare for the month of December. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13. Now, you know, we are discussing, we've been talking the whole month, we've been talking about the judgment of God. How does God see things? How does God judge things? That's what we've been talking about. Now, I'll take you to, to Hebrews 13 and verse 5. I want to show you something there. It says, Let your conversation be without covetousness. Let your conversation be be without covetousness. I'm reading the old King James. And be content with such things as you have. Now, he's saying, don't be covetous in your manner of life, in your way of living. Don't sit back and assume that, oh, because I don't have something, it means I've not achieved anything this year. There are people that think like that. Oh, I planned this year I was going to buy a new car. I planned this year I'm going to move to a bigger house or to move to my house. I'm going to get a land. Whatever your thoughts were at the beginning of the year, it's so easy right now to begin to look at it and say, I didn't achieve so much. So the year was a bad year for me. Also, it is so easy for someone to say, ah, this year I bought a land. I, I built a house or I moved into a bigger house. So I achieved a lot this year. That's not how you judge. See, if you judge that way, you may just be wrong. It is good to make progress in life. But remember what Jesus said. He says, beware of covetousness because a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things that he possesses. Don't judge your life by your possessions. Don't say, oh, last year I had four cars or I had one car. This year I had four cars. So I made progress. It doesn't mean you made progress. Believe me. The reason is something can happen that will take away those four cars tomorrow. Does that mean you have decreased in your progress? So you don't judge your life that way. Rather, you judge your life by the things God is doing in you. Now, I explain that to you. By the things God is doing in you, listen, you can produce anything you want to produce. If God is building you up, Paul said in Acts chapter 20, he says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up. Now, you see, that being built by the Word of God is the most important thing you must look out in your life. Are you being built up by God's Word? Now, he says, let your life be without covetousness. Let your way of living be without covetousness. Then he says, be content with what you have. Question. What do you have? Be content with what you have doesn't mean don't desire any good thing. It doesn't mean don't. But then he's telling you, look, don't judge your life 
by those things because God doesn't judge your life by those things. Abraham was a great man. God blessed Abraham. But do you know the truth? Abraham did not own a piece of land. When he wanted to bury his wife, he had to buy from the people. Now, meanwhile, God had promised him that very land. You see that? So he did not physically take possession of the land that God promised him. Would you now say Abraham was a failure? Now you know the truth. <laughs> they actually came to possess that land for, think about it, over nearly 500 years or more than 500 years later. They came to possess that land that God spoke to Abraham about. Will you call Abraham a failure? No. No. Abraham, we still to, today we still call ourselves children of Abraham. How come we, we so much want to identify with Abraham when the Abraham want to identify didn't own a piece of land? You see that? But he laid the foundation in his walk with God that caused the nation of Israel till this day to be dwelling in that land that God promised him. Now you see, so when God begins to build you up, be conscious with what he is doing in you. Because with what he is doing in you, you might be setting the foundations for many generations. That's the truth. Oh, Pastor, are you saying that we should not? No, 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 no. Understand. Your life does not consist of the physical things that you have gotten. No. Your life rather consists of the dealings and workings of God in you. So how do I rate myself if I've done well this year? Are you more obedient to the word of God? Are you more yielded to the things that the Spirit of God will want you to do? Do you hear his voice more? Do you understand his voice more? Now, if those things are working in you, then in no time, and I'm telling you this, in no time, because you see, the moment God sees that he can trust you, how do you know God can trust you? When he knows that at any point, if he gives you, he gives you an instruction, you will carry it out. At that point, I, be, I tell you this truth, God is willing to give you anything. So when he says here, let your conversation, conversation means manner of life, not just when you are speaking, your way of living. He said, let it be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Now look at what he says next. For he had said, for he had said, past tense now. What did he say? Who's, who's he referring to? God, for God have said. What did he say? I will never leave you. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I love this part. God has said, he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. To leave me means to turn away from me. For any reason. To forsake me means to pull back from me. Now, you forsake someone who probably have done something wrong or who didn't listen to you or who didn't do things the way he, you wanted him to do it. So he said, you know what? I know I promised to, to, to walk with you, but right now, I'm sorry, I've got to pull back. Now that's forsaking you. are forsaking that person because of his action or because of his presence condition but God says I will never leave you I will never forsake you whoa do you believe that now when he says be content with such things as you have do you know this is the thing that you have his promise to ever be with you this should give you courage in life you know why 
Now, when you know that he is with you, question then is, what is he doing with me? And I'll tell you what he's doing with you. He is with you to always instruct you or tell you what you should do. He is with you to always tell you or instruct you on what you should do. Now, if that is true, then why should I be afraid of tomorrow? He will tell me what to do. Why should I be afraid of 2023? He will tell me what to do. Why should I be afraid of work and what, what their plan is? He will tell me what to do. It's as simple as that. Now, watch this now. He says, the reason he's saying that, now I'm going to read verse, verse 5 into verse 6. The reason he's saying he will never leave you nor forsake you is this. He wants you to boldly say. Verse 6 says, so that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And this should be the end result of your life. The reason he has said he will never leave you, he will never forsake you, is because he wants you to boldly declare. Declare what? You know what? The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Now, not just declaring it with your mouth, but with your manner of life. The same way he says, let your way of life be without covetousness. Let your way of life be such that you know and your life declares that God, who is the Lord, is your helper. And because he's your helper, you are not scared what any man can do to you. Praise God. Any man also means any situation. Oh, inflation is going to rise next day. I will not fear. Because the inflation is caused by man. Praise God. It's the doing of men, the miscalculations of men, the greed of men, the wrong decisions of men. That's just the truth. Let me tell you this right, right now. Make up your mind. You will never be a victim of any man's mistake or any man's error. Make up your mind for it. I'm not going to sit down here and fall and become a victim of what people somewhere are taking decisions on based on their greed or making mistakes based on their short-sightedness. I'm never. You know why? Because God will always tell me what to do. Praise God. Now that's one confidence I want you to carry in your heart today. What is it? God is with me. And what's he doing with me? He's with me to tell me what to do. Oh, you wanted to build your house. And now they say, wow, the price of cement is going to skyrocket next year. What am I going to do? God will tell me what to do. Okay, you live in Nigeria, for example. Oh, most likely they are going to take, your, take out 12, 12 subsidy, and you're thinking of buying a car. Ah, what do I do? God will tell me what to do. Don't be afraid. Praise God. Don't be afraid. Be content with what you have. And what do you have? You have him. That's what you have. Praise God. That's what he's telling you to be content with. You've got him. He is there. He's giving you his word. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Come on, take advantage of that promise. It doesn't matter what you hear today. My first response should be, Lord, I know you're with me. What do you want me to do concerning this situation? Concerning the economy, concerning my health, what do you want me to do? If that becomes your judgment, just like it is God's judgment, then guess what you're doing? You are walking in the light as he is in the light. And what did First John tell us? You are in fellowship. And guess what? The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses you from everything that doesn't look like God. Praise God. And then your life is going to flourish and, and bring all glory to his name. Praise God. My time is up for today. 
But listen to me. Believe his word. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. The reason is he wants you to be bold enough to say, Lord, you're my helper. I will not fear what any woman, any man, any situation can do to me. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.